Hello, it's Isaac and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm spending some time out of my kitchen to show you my favourite spots near London Bridge. There'll be lots of good food, markets and some fantastic views of the city. And if that sounds like your kind of thing, then do stick around. First stop, only a few minutes away from the London Bridge Underground Station, we're going to pop across the street to Hayes Gallery. Known as the Hayes Wharf back in the 1800s, it was a busy port where dry goods like tea, because we Brits love our tea, were shipped in and out of London. And although its days as a trading hub has long ended, the building was redeveloped in the 1980s and it is now home to plenty of charming little cafes and boutique shops. It is usually pretty quiet here before lunchtime, perfect to grab a cup of morning coffee before going for a quiet walk by the Thames. So I just finished my morning coffee and taking a walk just outside of Hayes Gallery and as I said it's uh, not that busy at the moment, the stores are still opening up but you get some really nice view of historic landmarks especially the Tower Bridge over here and you don't really have to fight the crowd to get some really nice photos. Today we're just going to cover the London Bridge Bankside area so we'll save the Tower Bridge for another day so let's head back over that way. After that nice relaxing stroll by the Thames River I think it's time for us to grab some lunch. Luckily, one of London's oldest food market is just a five minute walk away. So let's head on over to Borough Market. So I actually walk past this market every day to work. And my tip is not to come here too early because market traders will be busy setting up. And whilst it does make for some good street photography, it is not so fantastic if you're hungry. Like Padella for example, very famous for their pastas. They will just be showing off their pasta making skills by the window, leaving you salivating outside. So, even though the official opening hours are 8 or 10am in the morning, depending on which day of the week, I would recommend coming here at lunch to get the full Borough Market experience. Okay, I'm just on my way to Borough Market, actually I'm just outside, and uh, the best way to get here is just by the tube, it's literally right opposite the stations, just follow the sign for Borough Market and you'll get there. There are multiple entrances here and it's just really easy to find. One thing I would recommend is bringing cash to this uh, to the market, as with all food markets. They do take cards, but it's just a lot quicker and easier to deal with cash. Anyway, let's go in and check out what's going on. There's so much variety here that you really are spoiled for choice. This is not just for food that you can eat on the go either. There are plenty of places for gifts and souvenirs as well. You've got handcrafted bowls and plates, you have jars of honey, coffee beans, wine, cheese, olive oil, spices, oh and the list goes on and on. I obviously can't cover everything in just one video, so I'm going to call out a few of my favourite places. Okay, as you can see it's Christmas right around the corner, so the decorations here are quite festive. Unfortunately this also means it's winter and it's fairly cold and my hands are freezing. So what I'm going to do is we can pop across the road within Borough Market to this place called Rabo 1745. It's one of my favourite places to grab a hot chocolate to keep me warm. Rabo 1745, apologies for my pronunciation, is a restaurant and a cafe in the heart of Borough Market. It is part of Hotel Chocolat, a British chocolatier which owns their own cocoa farm in the Caribbean. They have an amazing lineup of cocoa centric products, which ranges from a hot chocolate drink made from 100% dark chocolate to things like mm, chocolate scented diffusers for your home. I think I'll stick with the hot chocolate for today. Alright, I think it's time to grab some lunch. Make sure you walk around the whole market before deciding what to get, because there's nothing worse than eating something only to get massive food envy later on. Also, don't forget to check out the fresh produce section as well, because many traders will be cooking with some of those very ingredients. Some of my favourites are the wild mushroom risottos and the fresh oysters from the coast of England. There is also an abundance of hot food and dessert stores in the outer area of the market just by the main entrance. There is of course an impressive selection of baked goods here as well, very similar to things which I make on my channel, like macarons and brownies, so it's always good to come here for some inspiration. For those who are interested in how to make some of these things, I'll leave a link in the description box below and also in the corner of this video. Hello, can I get the uh, pork chorizo and red pepper one please? Thank you very much. Okay, so I've just ducked out of Borough Market to um, eat my scotch eggs. 
it's a little bit quieter down here and behind me is actually a very famous ship called uh, the Golden Hind um, which back in the day traveled around the world and um, again this area is very nice uh, because you get really nice views of the Thames and this is a little bit quieter so I can eat my lunch in peace and quiet Tucked away by the Thames behind Borough Market, the Golden Hind is a replica of a ship from the 1570s, captained by Sir Francis Drake. You can do paid tours of the ship and even hire it out for events like weddings and parties, which is pretty cool. But for today, I'm only passing by to eat my lunch and enjoy the lovely views. So before we go to our next destination and leave Borough Market, I've just got to show you guys one of my favourite bakery shops in the whole of London. There's a little shop called Condator and Cook, which is just across the road and they do this amazing chocolate hazelnut cake, which is to die for. There are a few branches dotted all around London and the cookbook is one of my favorites because the recipes actually taste like the stuff they sell in store. Okay, next up, we're going to Tate Modern for a bit of art and culture. I don't get it. Joking aside, the Tate Modern has one of the largest collection of contemporary and modern art in the world. The gallery itself is converted from the old Bankside power station, so there are plenty of open spaces for some pretty interesting installations. The building itself has expanded over the years to keep up with the growing number of visitors, and there are always new exhibitions to keep things fresh. Entry to the museum is free, but you may have to pay for some of the special exhibitions throughout the year. One of the best things about coming to the Tate Modern is the awesome views of London. In the main building, there's a viewing platform facing St Paul's Cathedral in the City of London, one of the two key financial districts in the capital. One of the major additions to the Tate was the Blavatnik building. Opened back in 2016, it provides another 22,000 square metres of space to the building. So what's really cool about this building is that um, it goes all the way up to floor 10, which is higher than the other building and it's free to go all the way up to the top where there's a viewing platform and you get some really nice views of London, even better than the other one we saw of St Paul's. For those who are into Shakespeare, a reconstruction of the Globe Theatre is right next to the Tate Modern. Limited number of tickets are available at the box office, so I would recommend booking in advance if you want to see a play here. They do also offer guided tours of the theatre if you want to learn about the building and some of the history behind why it's so iconic. Okay, we're done with the Tate, it's just behind me. And uh, we're actually losing light very quickly in the day, so I'm actually going to get a move on to our next destination to get some food and a drink. Now I could head back to Borough Market, but that will be a bit boring since we've done that this today already. Um, I'm going to go to a little place called Flatiron Square. Um, it's not quite as touristy, not quite as big as Borough Market, uh, but there's a lot of street food and bars over there. Uh, perfect place for us to take a little bit of break, grab a drink and grab some food. Flatiron Square is a cosy development tucked away underneath the arches of old railway tracks. It's part of the Low Line project, and although not yet completed, it's intended to be London's version of the High Line in New York City. It has plenty of restaurants, bars and music, and is a very popular spot for locals to come unwind after work. From ramens, to pizzas, to burgers, to salads, there are plenty of choices for food around here. Tonight I was really craving Asian food, so I ended up ordering a nasi goreng. The sun sets really quickly in the winter, and it's pretty much dark outside by 6pm. This is the perfect time for us to go up to the Shard and see what London looks like at night. The Shard is the tallest building in the UK and stands over 300 metres above ground. It is right on top of the London Bridge Underground Station, a perfect location for us to wrap up the day. The viewing platform is on top of the Shard on the 72nd floor. Tickets will set you back about £32. But unfortunately, I couldn't get hold of a ticket at the door, so I would recommend booking ahead of time. Instead, I decided to go to Gong Bar, located on the 52nd floor. It's part of the Shangri-La Hotel, so the drinks are not cheap. However, you do get some fantastic views, and I soon forgot about the £20 I paid for this gin and tonic. Okay, we're finally back home. 
it is about eight o'clock in the evening already, so I've spent the whole day walking around and stuffing my face with good food, drinks, and just enjoying beautiful views around London. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the trip as well. And if you want to go to any of the places I spoke about today, you can get to London Bridge by pretty much any public transport within London. So really, really convenient. If you've got any questions, just drop them down in the comments down below and I'll try to answer them as best I can. And finally, I just want to say thank you for everyone for supporting the channel this year. We have reached a milestone of 1,000 subscribers, which is huge for me. Uh, a year ago this time, I think I had about 100 subscribers. And I just want to make this video as something a little bit different um, to say thank you to you guys. So I hope you guys have a very happy new year. And if you do enjoy this type of content where it's a little bit different to my recipes, do let me know because it does take a lot of effort to make and I do enjoy making this stuff a lot. So if you do enjoy it, then I can explore other areas of London as well. Anyway, have a really good Christmas and a happy new year and I'll see you guys in 2019. And I can finally eat this cake which I've been carrying around for the whole day.